Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to go over House Bill 2127 in the state of Texas. This is a bill that a lot of people have been emailing me about because when I lived in New York City, I would go over a lot of the things that are wrong with New York City. And guess what? There's a lot of things wrong with just about every place in the country. So let's go over what we have here. This is a bill that says the provisions of this code preclude municipalities or counties from adopting or enforcing an ordinance, order, rule, or policy in a field occupied by a provision of this code unless explicitly authorized by statute. A municipal or county ordinance, order, rule, or policy that violates this section is void and unenforceable. And the part that is truly fun, the part that says any person, including a taxpayer, adversely affected by a municipal or county ordinance, order, rule, or policy, blah, 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 can bring an action against the municipality, county, or official. And it goes over this for agriculture, meaning the people that are working in the farms and fields, labor, as in people that are doing construction on houses outside in 106 degree heat, national resources code, as in the people that are dealing with oil and gas exploration. Industries that make a lot of money that would tend to benefit maybe a little bit from a more lax regulatory framework. Now, for somebody who did business in New York City, I am used to dealing with people that literally cannot tell me how to obey the rules, but they fine me for it. And then when I ask, how do I avoid this fine in the future? Because this rule says to do something when I'm buying stuff from people and I'm not buying stuff from people. So how do I obey your law? And they literally cannot tell me? It would be really cool if I got to sue the person who made that ordinance and not follow it because it is bullshit that you cannot tell me how to obey your own local laws. I understand why somebody like me in the city of New York would support a bill like this. In Texas, I don't get it as much because you don't have any of this stuff. When I called my local city government to ask what licenses I needed, the woman literally laughed at me and said, you must be from New York or California. We don't have that here. You don't need a license to be in business. What about this other stuff? You don't need a license for that either. There are very few regulations here that are annoying. The regulations and ordinances that would not be legal under this current bill is stuff like this that says all employees performing construction activities at a construction site are entitled to a rest break of no less than 10 minutes for every four hours worked. This was from the Austin City Council. And again, they're a liberal government, but this is reasonable. Again, to be clear, I kind of tend to go very far in the opposite direction. At my business, my employees do not have to tell me when they take breaks. They are not timed on their breaks, and there are no limits to their breaks. In fact, I am such a bad boss, bad manager, and bad business owner that when I take a two-day lobbying trip, all of my employees take lunch breaks at the same time, so that there is literally nobody there to service the customer who leaves a one-star review. I am a bad boss, a bad manager, and a bad business owner which if any of you have been watching this channel for any period of time, you don't need me to tell you that. You should not be following my example if you want to run a profitable or a successful business. That part aside, even when I try my best to enter the, un the mind of the greediest business owner on earth, it's really difficult for me to understand why legislators would have ran to their, their state government and said, you have to do something about these local city ordinances because they're asking people to be, a, to be able to take 10 minutes of a break every four hours. That's going to kill my business. I really don't understand the problem that is actually being fixed here with this legislation. As somebody that came from here from New York City, where you will have scaffolding that stays up for literally 15 years and never has any construction done, you would just see these buildings that look like they are perpetually in a state of being worked on with nobody doing any work. I understand you do not want to become New York City. Trust me, I don't want you to become New York City either. I like that when I drive by Palm Valley and Northwest Grimes Boulevard and Round Rock that six months ago you just saw a pile of wood and now you see fully completed homes. The rate at which construction occurs in Texas is it's very fast, it's very efficient, and I think it's great. You actually build things here and that's cool. The thing is, it seemed like you guys were able to do that before this bill was passed. So what is the problem you're actually fixing here? What is the problem that you are fixing with this legislation? I just don't get it. Even back when workers did have their 10 minute break every four hours by law, it seemed like you were building things just fine. And the reason I keep bringing this up with the breaks for water for construction workers is because this is what keeps being brought up by the local news. They keep saying that the governor passed a bill that's going to make it illegal for a city to mandate that workers get a 10 minute break every four hours if they are working outside in the hot sun to do things like drink water and sit in the shade. And I understand the concept of human greed. I really do. But as a selfish business owner that wants his employees to actually work, this does not make sense to me. And I don't see business owners coming out in mass protests saying, you need to sign this bill because my workers are taking 10 minute breaks every four hours. I just don't see that happening. As a business owner, I need my employees to actually want to do work. 
I need the work that they do to be good. If I don't give them a 10 minute break every four hours, the work, they're just going to start calling every motherboard in their queue and no fix. And I'm not going to make any money. If I'm dealing with construction, the type of work that somebody's going to do, if they can't even take 10 minutes off every four hours is probably going to be complete and utter garbage that is going to fall apart. That is going to ruin the reputation of my company. Every news outlet I read is saying that this bill is going to make it illegal for a city government to say that you need to mandate breaks for your employees. That is technically true. Something doesn't sit right with me there. Even when I try to become a greedy asshole business owner, when I try to enter that in my mindset, it's very difficult for me to understand why any business on planet Earth would disagree with this type of ordinance. The point that I'm very curious about is who is actually pushing for this? Who is the person that said, you know what? This ordinance is just going too far. We can't have people taking 10 minute breaks every four hours. That'll ruin our business. All the news outlets are saying that this ordinance would be illegal under this state bill. And technically, they are correct. This would be a casualty of that. But is that the real reason this is happening? I don't think so. And I think that there's something else that's being missed here. And I would like to ask not only the audience, but also the business community. Are you open to actually coming onto this channel, having an interview, and bringing up what your actual honest concerns are? I will not edit you deceptively. I will not edit you at all. I will allow you to speak your mind and speak your piece. Because what I'm hearing here just doesn't make sense. It says here, cities and counties in Texas will instead be follow required to follow state codes. Supporters of the bill claim that local regulations led to inconsistency and stifled business dealings across the state. Can you say what those inconsistencies are? What are those business dealings that were stifled across the state? Because again, the news keeps pointing to this ordinance. And like, again, I'm reading this. This is an ordinance that seems totally fair. There has to be some other ordinance that pissed you guys off enough that you felt the need to pass a bill destroying the local municipality's ability to regulate labor in their own city. Or maybe there isn't, and you guys are just evil. But I'm open to hearing from you. For too long, progressive municipal officials and agencies have made Texas small businesses jump through contradictory and confusing hoops when it comes to the current hodgepodge of onerous and burdensome regulations, Burroughs said in a statement in February when introducing the bill. What are those onerous and burdensome regulations? Again, on my channel, I give an example of each. Here's an example of them saying that I bought something that I didn't buy. Here's them literally taking my $350 to renew my license and not renewing my license and then sending me a letter saying that I had to shut my business down because I didn't renew the license that I paid for last year. I give examples and citations of every single one of New York City's stupid effing regulations and how it effed me as a business owner when I was trying to do the right thing. Can you do that here? Because here's the thing. If you refuse to do that, then you, your opposition will do that for you. And they will point to every single one of the ordinances that is no longer legal under this bill that, again, most of the civilized world think are a good thing. Dare I say it, a 10-minute break every four hours, that's nothing. You, again, I used to have 15-minute breaks when I worked at Model Sporting Goods. If you work for eight hours, you got a 30-minute break and two 15-minute breaks. If you work four hours, you got a 15-minute break. I used to not bother with the 15-minute breaks because the time it takes for me to walk the subway, wait in line, and get the food is more than 15 minutes, much less the time it takes for me to actually eat it. A 15-minute break, in my opinion, is just begging for a write-up because you can't do anything with a 15-minute break. I can't get food in 15 minutes. The line out the door at Sweet Green is going to be longer than 15 minutes half of the time. Again, this is continuing on. We want these small business owners creating new jobs and providing for their families, not trying to navigate a Byzantine array of local regulations that twist and turn every time they cross city limits, said Representative Dustin Burroughs, the Lubbock Republican carrying the bill in the House. And again, my question would be, what are those? Because if you refuse to point to the specific local ordinances and rules, your opposition will do that for you, and they will make you look like the evil bastard that you may possibly be by, again, pointing out that you're against people having water breaks. The long campaign for the legislation that became House Bill 2127 began in 2018, when Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio passed ordinances requiring employers to offer paid sick leave. Okay, now we're getting a little bit closer. Again, if you're Intel or AMD or NVIDIA, paid sick leave is nothing to you. If you are a two-person shop that you started when you're broke, paid sick leave is the end of you. If you, I hired my first employee when I had $3,000 in the bank. If somebody said, I need two months of paid sick leave, um, I'm done. I'm one dude with one assistant. Like, I would have not been able to do that. And when I got to the point of a six or a 15 person company, if somebody needs to take a month off, it's a little bit different. And obviously, if you're at the level of Intel or Microsoft or Exxon, somebody taking paid sick leave is, is like, you're not, you're literally not even going to see it on the balance sheet. Um, but I can understand as a small business owner, if there was an ordinance about paid sick leave, how this leads to this bill. But this is what's getting cited in the news all the time. And that 
I, again, I really, I want to hear the business owner. I want to hear the business owner tell me, I really hate Austin and Dallas requiring people to have a 10 minute break every four hours. That's why we went to the state capitol. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not hearing that. NFIB says the ordinances were about more than just paid sick leave breaks and minimum wage. The ordinances would have given city government subpoena power to investigate potential violations, powers which worried the NFIB, Spillman said in an April statement. I just don't know why a city ordinance would have something in there like that that's very frightening to a small business owner with no compliance officers. Now, I am no stranger to being investigated. And trust me, I understand, as somebody who has again, had lien and warrants out on his business that were literally sent to another fucking state that ruined his ability to get financing for over seven years, I am sympathetic to this. But can you cite the ordinance? Can you cite what was in the ordinance? Can you cite an example of that city ordinance being used against the business owner? Because I cite mine. I cite, here is the specific ordinance. Here is how it was used against me. Here is why this was improper. Here is how it hurt me. Here is all the evidence. Does the NFIB have that? Do any of these politicians pushing this bill forward have that? Can they show where actual business owners have actually been harmed? Because it seems like union leaders can show very easily how they're going to be harmed. Union leaders can show you without effort all the local city ordinances that allow their workers to have better working conditions, that allow them to take a break, to sit under a tree and drink water. And they can also show you the harm that is going to occur. They can show you that the worker deaths have been on the upswing in Texas. They can show you that this is probably not going to get better when you take away their breaks. Can you, at the NFIB, demonstrate how businesses have actually been harmed by these local ordinances? And more importantly, are you actually open to coming on my channel to discuss it? Because I think this would be fun. Again, I actually tried to do this in 2018 with landlords in New York City. I've gone over this for years on my channel, how you have all of these areas of New York City that are completely hollowed out and empty because the landlords will never rent them. And a lot of the more socialist politicians will say that these landlords are evil and they are horrible people and blah, blah, blah. I actually reached out to a bunch of them and I tried to get them to come on my channel. I told them I would not edit the interview. I would not edit the content of the video. I will give you the questions ahead of time so that you have time to repair. And in spite of that, I reached out to over 40 management companies and large institutional landlords. And there wasn't a single one of them that wanted to come on to talk about any of these problems. I'm open to it. I want to hear your side of the story too. Again, what is it that has you so pissed off that you are trying to get the governor to sign a bill that would make a local ordinance saying that you're allowed to take a 10 minute break every four hours illegal? How is it justified? What are the issues that you have? Can you cite those specific issues and can you show how that has actually harmed a real business owner? If you are a real business owner that has been harmed by a local ordinance that would be made illegal by House Bill 2127, can you tell me what they are? Because at this point in time, it really just seems like this is an attempt by the Texas state government to take away the rights and the ability of local municipalities to regulate those municipalities. And when you consider that this is a state that fought for states' rights and against the tyrannical federal government, it feels really, really weird that the state government government is trying to take away the rights of local municipalities to regulate those municipalities as they see fit. Above all, when you look at the construction that's going on in the areas like Georgetown, Round Rock, Austin, and you see the speed at which it is going without this bill being put in place, what is the problem that you're actually trying to fix? Again, we are not living in New York City here. The local ordinances in Austin and Round Rock, while probably more burdensome than what you're going to find in Mason, Texas, or something else, don't really seem to be dragging things down to a New York City level here. So I'm very curious. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And above all, if you're somebody who wants to come on here, whether you are a union leader or you are the co-sponsor of this bill, my email is down below in the comments and I would love to hear from you. I think it would be fun to have you on for an interview to talk a little bit about this. Because here's the thing, when I was talking about stuff in New York City, can I be honest with you? When I was going over this playlist, why businesses leave New York City, I knew I probably wasn't solving that problem. It's just unsolvable. New York City is a complete cluster F and miserable mess. Whether we're talking about the people that renew your licenses, the people that enforce the laws, the people that create the laws, they are completely and utterly out of touch with the residents and the business owners in that area. They don't care because nobody will ever hold them accountable. I realized when I made those videos, even if I did get a landlord to come on that channel or something, like nothing's actually changing. I had kind of written New York City off as a lost cause. Texas, I haven't. Maybe it is a lost cause. Maybe I'm naive, but I'd like to learn more about the place where that I live. 
And I'd like to in- extend that same invitation to you that I extended to all of those real estate firms in 2018 that never took the opportunity to come on my channel and explain why it is they kept half of the city empty. I want to hear from you, whether you're a union leader or whether you're one of the people that was pushing for this bill, or if you're a business owner that is pro this bill because of a way that you've been negatively affected by a city ordinance. What harm has been done to you that is so great that it is worth having a bill signed into law that takes away people's ability to have worker breaks if they are on a construction site 10 minutes every four hours. Let me know, and I would like to have you on. Is this bill going to genuinely benefit small businesses across the state of Texas and workers as well, or is this just a way for a conservative state government to shit on liberal cities and maintain dominance over them? Let's have a conversation, and let's try to find out. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.